It's 8-11 now and time to tune over to Patty Byburn for the latest news. And before you get going, I just want to say we aren't focused on general news, but we do want to say that our hearts go out to everyone in the Connecticut community where that horrible, horrible mask slaying took place at that elementary school on Friday. We typically are an upbeat show and talk about all things food, wine, travel, and leisure, those sorts of things. But I did want to mention that since this is a news segment off the top. That's right. And our thoughts are with the people there in Connecticut. For sure. Now, Patty, what's making news? here locally? Well, from the Eat Drink Explorer News Desk on this Sunday morning, the airline that consistently tops many traveler satisfaction surveys is testing whether consumers will tolerate some new fees for baggage and early check-in. I'm just going to say right now, we will not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm hoping. (laughs) All right. So Southwest Airlines says the new charges will likely take effect in the new year. The nation's largest passenger airline is working to increase revenue by as much as $300 million. This is according to the LA Times. The new fee scale includes a bump from $50 to $75 for a third or overweight bag. Also, early bird check-in will go from $10 to $12.50. The California Department of Fish and Game is playing Santa Claus with stockings of a different kind. We're talking about the stocking of more than 30,000 pounds of live rainbow trout in lakes covering seven of the nine Bay Area counties. That's clever. Who wrote that? (laughs) <laughs> Very nice, Randall yes. White. I just actually was thinking to myself, I'm so glad Randall writes this because he makes me look good. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> the boost in fish populations at these local lakes is part of the department's Fishing in the City program, now in its 19th year. Some craft brew lovers may be surprised to know they're actually ordering beer made by some of the world's largest brewers when they belly up at their local pub. The organization representing many of the nation's small brew pubs and micro breweries have had it and let their feelings be heard this past week when they called out the parent companies of Budweiser, Miller and Coors for deceptive labeling. The Brewers Association says the craft like beers do not indicate in any way that they are made by the big guys. Examples include Blue Moon, made by S.A.B. Miller, and Shock Top, made by Anheuser-Busch InBev, both headquartered in Europe. Best advice for local craft beer lovers, head to a locally owned brew pub. And you can always ask your server which tap is brewed regionally. Right. So many people think that like a Bud is so American or a Coors, you know. <laughs> right. There's nothing more American than supporting your local uh, small business brewer. Right. A regional, local. And both Anheuser-Busch. Imbev and Miller Coors uh, are now owned by European uh, companies. Right. Right. So, not that that's a bad thing, but if you want to shop local, (laughs) just ask. All right. The type of wine you order may say more about your personality than you think, at least according to a new study out of France. Apparently, red wine drinkers are more relaxed than uh, those who drink either white or rosé. Okay. I can attest to that. Some people I know. (laughs) Daddy, I think we're going to have to get to We are running out of time. Should I finish this up later? Yes. We'll do it right after the break. I want to hear more about red wine drinkers. What it says about you and your socioeconomic status. Also, a little weather update for those of you here in California listening. And we'll talk hookahs right after the break. It is 8.15, just about. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio.